you have to meet people where they are. Paulists are people at the dinner table. We're always discussing the latest in the news and how that's going to affect people going to church. And um, I learned in the seminary that that's really different. Uh, Paulists love talking about ecclesiology, the theology of who the church is and how the church is. You put a couple Paulists together and they're going to talk about current events and how they affect the church. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Sometimes I call it the Holy City, the New Jerusalem, but we won't get into all that. I don't wanna bore you all to tears. I went to school in Rochester, New York, and eventually majored in optical engineering. And then I worked for four years back in my hometown of Pittsburgh, building some of the world's largest telescopes. It was shortly after moving back to Pittsburgh, I felt the call to consider being a priest. Um, I was somebody who had never thought of this growing up, so I sort of had this lightning bolt moment when I was 27. I felt I was called to the Diocese of Pittsburgh. I had just moved back there. I was singing at an ordination in a choir when I felt this lightning bolt call, but there wasn't something quite right. And my sister had suggested I talk to the priests of her church, but I don't really take advice from my sister. Well, she's had the last laugh because I eventually did talk with them and she belonged to the Newman Center at Ohio State, administered by the Paulist Fathers. I moved to Washington, D.C. to begin my novitiate, but I had pastoral assignments different places. I was in Berkeley, California. I did an assignment in Portland, Oregon. I did my hospital ministry in Boston. Spent a summer learning very basic Spanish in Guatemala. Spent a summer at our parish in New York City. And uh, then I did my pastoral year of all places at the Newman Center at Ohio State. I was ordained a deacon along with my dear brothers, Tom Gibbons and Renee Constanza in September of 2011. And I finished school in December. And so I started full-time ministry in January. And so I started at St. John 23rd Parish, back then called Blessed John 23rd Parish at the University of Tennessee, four months as a deacon and then I was ordained and stayed for another four years as a priest. I arrived at St. Austin's in July of 2016. I'm one of the few associate pastors who's been here in recent years who is not a brand new priest. I had petitioned the Paulus to send me here. I thought that St. Austin's would really give me some depth and some experience and things I hadn't had experiences with yet. One of the things I've been very involved with is young adult ministry, especially graduate students and other people in their 20s and 30s. They have lots of great questions and they're smart and they're willing to change. And so when you talk with them and they're really struggling with something and we offer advice as a group or I will as an individual, and then sometimes they take that advice. And within a few months, we get to witness how their lives change and blossom. And that's a real privilege. Right after I moved to Austin, Paul Snatchko, the head of our media office, suggested that I should go to South by Southwest. This huge conference and festival held in Austin every year, about a half a million people come. So I went and I go around, I wear my collar and I interact with all these tech people and um, After that first year, I've applied to be a presenter of some kind in various ways. So 
The next year, I was a mentor and five people signed up to have 15 minutes with me one-on-one -on -one to talk about public speaking. And then the next year, I facilitated a meetup group for people who were trying to figure out what the role of religion could be in a company uh, talking about that. We're encouraged to ponder honestly. We work through our questions, our struggles, and our anxieties to come to a deeper, more robust faith. I feel that my personal vocation is to witness the Holy Spirit working in the lives of other people. So many people come to see me in good times and in bad, and they tell me what they're going through. And I help them realize that the Holy Spirit's been there with them. Father Hecker was somebody who really had this attentiveness to the Holy Spirit. And when he did spiritual direction with people, he really helped them to listen and rely on the Holy Spirit. And I like to think I'm carrying on part of that myself. Mm -hmm.